So I released a video recently talking about all the different strategies you can employ to prevent being bitten by bugs, specifically black flies, uh, mosquitoes, uh, ticks especially, and even maybe horse flies or deer flies. And one of those strategies is the use of, use of permethrin spray. Well, I live in Canada, and unfortunately in Canada, you can't buy the now well-known Sawyer products. I was able to pick up a bottle of Sawyer uh, permethrin spray when I'm visiting my daughter last year in the United States and I have this but I know I'm going to run out of it sooner or later. So a couple of years ago while looking for an alternative to the Sawyer I came across a couple of products that are available to you in Canada if you're of interest. So stay tuned and I'll show you what they are. Now, before I show you what it is that I purchased that has permethrin in it and available to us here in Canada, first I want to clear up the misunderstanding. There is a lot of people who believe that permethrin is illegal for sale in Canada, and that's not quite the case. It's just not approved for sale in Canada. Big difference. There's nothing illegal about having permethrin. Uh, in fact, you can actually buy clothing at one of our local stores, Marks here in Canada, that has been treated with permethrin. So it's not that it's illegal, it's just not yet approved for sale for the purposes of putting on clothing. There's a clear distinction there because what I'm about to show you has permethrin in it. It's just not for use on clothing. At least that's not one of the uses on the label, we'll say. The one that I've been buying and getting great results of is this. It's called On Guard. And I'll put the links to it, of course, where I picked mine up in the video description as well. But I went looking for a couple of other products to see what was going to be available to me out there. And believe it or not, one of the best sources of permethrin may be available to most of us in Canada and we don't even realize it. If you can go to a farm supply place there's a good chance that you can find a permethrin product there that you can purchase which is often intended for livestock specifically a lot of it around using it on horses and then the better part is it has a greater concentration of permethrin than what this on guard has I'll talk about that in a moment it's actually equal to what's in the Sawyer product I'll put the source uh, or the name of two different products and their links in the video description that I found on Amazon. I live in a city, so farm supply places aren't quite so common around here. So what I want to do is just talk about using these non-Sawyer products on your clothing. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the permethrin that I purchased, this OnGuard ProPerm Insect Killer. So as I mentioned, it's not intended for use on clothing. Having said that, I've been using it it now for three or four years even on my clothing because of course I can't get the soy here unless I go to visit my daughter and it is a weaker concentration than what the Sawyer is so the Sawyer on its label will tell you it has 0.5 percent permethrin in solution uh, this has 0.35 percent permethrin in solution so the question is, is it as effective? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's been working for me. I can't guarantee that it will work for you, but it has been working for me. I probably spray it much more liberally on my clothes than you might with your Sawyer, but I think at the end of the day, I'm getting, well, I know, I'm getting enough permethrin on my clothing that it has done a great job of repelling ticks, mosquitoes, black flies, and even deer flies. And you know how much I hate those in the woods. So here's the thing it is this is intended for domestic use around home so this is the type of thing if you have an apartment or you're living in a home and you find that you've either invaded by cockroaches spiders ants bed bugs or whatever this is the product that you're going to buy to spray around your home so I guess the first answer or the first question that answers is relative safety it's relatively safe once it's dry. Let me clarify that. You have to let these products dry on your clothing or anywhere that you're applying before you can consider them safe. While they're still in solution, uh, theoretically, yeah, they, you could get it on your hands, rub it in your eyes, put it in touch your mouth, you know, it, and absorb a little bit through. So that's the first thing. It is safe once it is dry. Now, the same thing goes for Sawyer, for that matter. Some of the same safety procedures are necessary to follow. Now, let's talk about safety a little bit further. The common sense really does apply here. This is an insecticide. It is, in fact, a poison. If you get it on yourself or breathe it in, you're in, 
ingesting some toxic chemicals here. So be safe about it. Number one, I'm out here in the morning. It's a beautiful morning here in Nova Scotia. No wind. That's the big thing. No wind. If there was even the slightest breeze, I would make sure the breeze was at my back as I was spraying it on the clothing so that I wouldn't have it come back in my face. If I really wanted to be safe, yes, I'd put goggles on and I'd put a respirator on just to take it a step further. I haven't found that necessary because I've been quite cautious and conscious about what I'm doing when I'm applying it to my clothing. So that would be number one. Number two, you, well, you could also wear gloves if you really want to make sure that you're not absorbing it into your skin. Uh, number two is let it dry. So absolutely let it dry. And I'll be spraying some clothing here in a few moments time. I'll be putting it out to, uh, on my clothesline here and allowing it to dry fully before I wear it. I guess equally as important is making sure there's no other living things in your immediate area. And that means your pets, your children, your spouse. And that also means other beneficial insects. This will kill beneficial insects like honeybees or bees or uh, anything else that is a good thing to have. Uh, this will also kill them. So you want to make sure that you're not unintentionally killing insects that you don't want to. I guess it could also be poisonous to birds and other things as well. So once again, common sense, make sure you know where you're spraying it, that it is safe, that it is not going to affect other living things in your area. All right, those are the basic things. Now, I'm going to recommend highly to you that if you're interested in purchasing these things, that you take the time to read the labels, not only for the precautions that go along with it and the first aid should you get it in your eyes or happen to swallow it somehow. I don't know how that would happen. Oh yeah, that would make sense as well. Here's what I've done. I don't use this big jug directly. I have decanted it into a spray bottle and you can probably see I wrote permethrin on that. That's to make sure that anybody who picks that bottle up knows that it's got permethrin in it. Now I know there's no other labels on it to say what it's all about, but I keep the two of these together. So, you know, I feel pretty safe. I know where they're at. There's no children in my house. Nobody that's going to grab this unintentionally spray themselves or anything else with it. But it's always a good idea when you decant something that you label it so that it's obvious what's in that container. Even for yourself in case you forget like because you may have multiple spray containers with different products in them, right? Okay, so those are the basic things I want to say about it. What I'm going to do now is dig out the clothing and other items, and I'll talk about that in a moment, that I'm going to spray before going into the woods the next. All right, just one last thing before I start spraying my clothing, and that is why did I choose the On Guard product? Because there are a couple of other products that I found on Amazon that would probably do the job. Well, number one was cost. This was the most cost-effective one that I could see. This is a large container, 3.78 liters. And if you're going to be spraying a lot of clothing, then, you know, it gets expensive if you have to pay a lot for it. Because remember, this only lasts so long. In fact, Sawyer's product recommends uh, five washings or five weeks, so one or the other, whichever comes first, I guess. What I've been doing is probably every three or four washings, uh, more for my shirts than anything else, because uh, you know the pants don't seem to get as wet and dirty. Uh, then I'm respraying them after they come out of the wash, uh, after about four washings, I guess, because I feel I can afford to, and I want to make sure that I have the coverage from this product. So that's number one. Number two is that it's water-based. So I don't know about all the products, now, the ones that I've listed in the video description, uh, I know that at least two of them are water-based. And to me, the, the value in that is that they're going to soak into the clothing without leaving some kind of an oily residue that may either affect the appearance or actually affect the, the material itself. So that was number two. And the third thing is they're made in Canada. At least two of the products that I'm showing you. Now, this one and one of the other ones, Dr. Doom, that'll be in the video description, are made in Canada. So... Uh, if that's important to you, that's a plus, right? So the easiest thing to, for me to do is just reposition the camera. I'm only going to show you myself spraying a couple of pieces of clothing, uh, but I have quite a bit here I, I want to spray, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, so I'm going to be using my decanted permethrin from the On Guard in this spray container here. And what I've got is just one of my shirts that I like to wear to the woods, and I have it laying over the back of a chair. Once again, I'm very cautious that there is no wind. Beautiful morning here, no wind. And I'm going to give it a good soaking, so I'm just going to start spraying. If there is an overspray that goes with this, so again, be cautious of where that's going. All right, that's the back done. I'll make sure I get the collar before I turn it around. And the sleeves. I'm not sure if I'm picking up on camera right now, but I just do the sleeves, the back. I'll do the other sleeve. 
Yeah. Make sure I'm catching myself on camera, or at least hopefully I am. All right, I'm going to turn that over and do the other side, but I think you get the basic idea. Now, there is another piece of clothing here that I want to show you that I'm going to be coating. And this is a pair of pants for the very first time. So these just arrived in the mail for me yesterday. And these are from LA Police Care. And I will be testing these and eventually doing a review on them. But these are the battle rattled version if you want to look them up. So uh, yeah, so here's, this is a, a good example. Brand new, still got the tags on it. I'm going to spray these, I might as well take the tags off, right? I'll spray these down so that when I, the next time I go to the woods, these I'll start wearing these for testing purposes and I'll be assured that they uh, are going to be coated and treated with the permethrin. Now, I, I have another pair of pants from 511 made of the same material, almost identical in every way. That's actually part of the reason why I wanted these, so I can compare the two brands together. So I know that the permethrin that I'm using is not going to damage or in any way harm the material. If you're unsure, if you've got something you're not sure, if, should I put it on? Find a little spot, maybe around the cuff or if it's pants or somewhere on the, the tail of your shirt to give it a little spray, see what it's going to do. See if it will stain, see if it's going to damage the material. Um, I'm finding that this On Guard is very, very forgiving for doing that with. And I expect part of the reason is, is because it's intended for in your house use, around your furniture and the, cra and the floorings, uh, uh, the carpets and everywhere else. So there's a very low chance that this is going to have any negative effect on this. Now, I will spray this off camera, but uh, there's one more thing that I want to talk about before we wrap this video up. You know, before I mention that very last thing, there, I should mention that when I was reading the bottle of Sawyer's, one of the things that says you don't spray is your hat. Uh, I can only imagine the reason why you wouldn't spray your hat is because I guess if it rains or if you get really sweaty, uh, the stuff could liquefy that's been now dried into your hat and it could come down the front of your face. So just to put that out there. I have been spraying my Tilly hats for a couple of years now. I, mind you, I spray the top half. I don't spray the under half. I guess I'm just a little nervous about having it that close to my eyes. So put that out there. Uh, you may want to not spray your hats, but then of course you're going to be looking for something else to deter the bugs from getting up there. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is based on a recent experience. So I got home one day recently and uh, I was unpacking my gear to put it away and lo and behold, a tick fell out of some of my gear. It was actually a cook kit that I had been sitting on the ground. So I realized, you know, I had not thought to be spraying my a backpack or any other gear that I'm going to lay on the ground. Lesson learned before uh, that became a problem because what could happen of course is you, maybe you personally are protected while you're out in the woods but if you end up transporting ticks home on your gear and they get off and they start looking for a proper meal uh, they could affect you and everybody else in the house. So you want to make sure you don't bring ticks home unintentionally. Good idea to spray your gear and specifically backpacks, tarps, tent floors, ground sheets. Now, what I'm going to be doing, because a lot of the time I'm, I'm not setting up a full tent or anything, is I have a piece of material. This is an old barbecue cover that uh, when the it, the cover died because it you know came apart, uh, I saved a good sized piece of it as kind of like a tablecloth for laying on the ground. It's a rubberized material. It's great. It was cheap. It was free, basically. And what I like to do when I go out is I lay this down and I'll put my, my kitchen stuff, you know, whatever I'm cooking with, my, my food bag and everything else on the sheet, on the ground just keeps it dry and kind of organized at the same time. I'm going to spray this and soak it as best I can with the hope, or at least I'll be testing this out, is to if I have all the other gear on this that ticks won't cross that as a barrier to get into my gear and uh, take them home. Regardless, when my gear comes home not only am I going to be doing a tick check of my personal body just to make sure another recommended strategy, but I'm also going to be checking my gear to make sure I didn't unintentionally bring any ticks home. All right, I'm going to close this video, but be just before I do, I want to ask you a question. So this is what I have found available to us here in Canada. I did a little reading and research and people talk about finding 
concentrates, something that is a much greater concentration in solution, then doing the math and watering it down to get to the 0.5% that they'll spray on their clothing. I haven't found that product around. If you are in Canada and you are aware of a product like that, then uh, maybe you could share it with the rest of us so we all know where the, to uh, go and find it. I expect if it's anywhere, it's probably at the same farm suppl supply places that the horse spray is at. But uh, not having one, I couldn't go and check that out. All right, that's all I have for you today. As I mentioned, I'll put the links for the On Guard, as well as Dr. Doom, as well as another one called Ultra Shield. I'll put those in the video description for you to research. Make sure you do your research. Don't just take my word for it. I'm sharing my experience, but you know it's up to you to do your own research on this. And if you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.